Hello, uh, my name is John Daly. I'm, here, I'm a docent here at the museum uh, for Vermont National Guard uh, Library and Museum. Uh, we're in front of the Civil War mural called Sheridan's Ride. It represents an incident that happened in the Shenandoah campaign of the fall of uh, 1864. Okay, this is the, the moment when General Phil Sheridan came uh, and reestablished control of the, at that point, disintegrating Union forces at the Battle of uh, Cedar Creek. Uh, Cedar Creek was uh, uh, the town that the, the Army had bivouacked, the Union Army had bivouacked on the morning of uh, October 19th. The Confederate uh, Union uh, forces surprised the Union forces in the morning in the fog, started pushing them up and rolling up the, the campsites. And the last campsite was uh, a campsite uh, which had a division that had the Vermont Brigade in. So we, what we see here is General Phil Sheridan coming from Winchester, Virginia, which was further into the uh, uh, Shenandoah Valley. He had just come back from uh, Washington, D.C., heard the gunfire, the cannons rolling 12 miles away. He and the staff that were with him rode for 12 miles as hard as they could uh, trying to get to where the battle was taking place. He was supposed to be the commanding general here for the uh, Union forces, and he was away from his uh, post, you know, duty, uh, talking to the uh, uh, government in Washington that, that uh, prior day. So when he got here, he rode so hard on his horse uh, that he only had one person left in his uh, staff, about 20 people. The rest of them were, were falling behind him. Uh, and his horse you see here is a horse called Rienzi. Uh, this was a famous uh, Morgan horse uh, that he, he absolutely loved. And it was a it's just uh, famous Vermont breed called the Morgan horses. And uh, he, he made, actually this ride made the Morgan horse uh, famous. What you see here is the Union troops uh, noticing he's coming up. Uh, there's a officer off to his uh, front who's waving his hat. And uh, that's, this was a member of the staff of uh, his uh, cavalry forces and said, you know, telling him what was going on. Also behind uh, uh, General Sheridan is a, another officer who's uh, jumping a pile of logs on his horse who happens to be the brigade commander for the uh, Vermont Brigade. The Vermont Brigade was basically the, uh, uh, the force that uh, basically was the steadiest at this point in the battle. Uh, they were one. Of the, they were in the last uh, division that was uh, uh, on this bivouac site, and they were able. To, you know, they knew the battle was coming to them. They prepared, uh, and they were waiting for it. Uh, further off in the, in the distance in this painting, we'll discuss the uh, Confederate forces. But right here, you're seeing the Winchester Turnpike coming in uh, into uh, Cedar Creek. General, Moore, uh, General uh, Sheridan has taken a, a right here, and it's going to hook up with the. Uh, uh, Vermont Brigade and be appraised of the situation. Okay, here we are. We're looking at the Confederate lines. This Realize that this line is, uh, the Confederates already pushed their way up through two core campsites uh, at, at, at Cedar Creek here. And in the distance, you can see the um, G.J. Mil Miller Farm. There's also a mill, uh, they also had a millery there. Uh, and you can see the, some fences and haystacks. The Confederate uh, Army at this stage of the battle were using some of these haystacks for sharpshooters. Near the, uh, the farm, you can see General Early, General Gordon, and in the distance near the haystack is uh, General Fitzhugh Lee. Those were three, the three Confederate generals that the artist uh, Charles Andrus put into the, the uh, uh, mural. Uh, you can see the line that the Confederates, they're behind stone, uh, stone wall at this stage of the battle. This was as far as the Confederate forces got. Uh, soon after General Sheridan came uh, to the battle site, he was able to get the, the, uh, the troops reorganized, and they eventually moved forward and finally pushed the, uh, the uh, Confederates off the battlefield. Uh, the confusion of the battle, you can see some trees in the distance, and the trees in the distance basically eventually were General um, Custer and his cavalry uh, uh, brigade 
move through the, uh, uh, the out of sight there and start to hit, to flank on the left flank of the uh, uh, Confederate troops. And that was basically the end of the battle. As soon as they realized that uh, the Union troops were now organized, cavalry was coming in on their flanks, they, they, they moved it off the battlefield. Okay, let's cover this section of the uh, uh, mural. Again, it's, uh, it's covering the, the incident just as uh, General Sheridan is approaching the battlefield uh, to take uh, command. Uh, in the, the distance, you can see the uh, division commander. He's basically looking uh, at the uh, approach of General Sher uh, Sheridan. Uh, he's on a horse. He's got a cropped tail. Uh, in the distance, you can see other lines of, uh, of uh, Union troops waiting to go into action. On the bay horse, to uh, just to the rear of General Sheridan, is uh, uh, Rutherford, B. Rutherford B. Hayes. Now, he would be uh, eventually become President of the United States. When this mural was done in the late 1880s, they did not realize there was actually another future U.S. president on the battlefield, and that was William McKinley, who was doing uh, basically a runner that day uh, uh, between uh, uh, the commanding officer and various units uh, on the battlefield. Uh, on the back and behind General Sheridan is the, the one uh, staff officer who was uh, able to keep up with them during the ride. Uh, there's still about 18 more staff officers, but they're stretched out on the road behind them, coming from Winchester. In the lower right corner here, you can see General Custer. He and the other officers behind him are all the, part of the cavalry element of, uh, of uh, General Sheridan's army. He would eventually, at the, later in the day, move his cavalry along the tree line uh, to come in on the left flank of the uh, Confederate forces. Uh, you can see Army field ambulances uh, in the background. Actually, uh, Rutherford B. Hayes would be wounded later in the day. He was asked to leave the battlefield, but uh, uh, continued to stay, uh, uh, earning uh, much praise from uh, fellow officers because he still wanted to maintain control of his units. This mural was painted by uh, Charles Harden Andrus. Uh, he was an artist, local artist of Vermonter. Uh, he wanted to do a historical uh, mural covering uh, aspects of the uh, uh, Battle of Cedar Creek because of the importance it was to Vermonters. Uh, the, uh, one of the, the units that was uh, most uh, involved with salvation of the battle at the end of the day was the Vermont Gate Brigade, which had six uh, units of, uh, of uh, Vermont infantry in it. Uh, and so there was a lot of Vermonters that had a deep interest in what was going on at the battle. Uh, some of the uh, Vermont uh, units had actually been at Gettysburg in a prior battle, and at this point of the war, they were transferred with uh, General Sheridan to the um, Shenandoah Valley to uh, uh, basically take control of the Confederate breadbasket. Uh, the painting was done between uh, uh, 1885 and 1889. Uh, research was started in uh, 1885. Uh, the artist finally uh, finished it in 1889. And the first uh, notation of what or it's, it's, it was uh, presented to the public was in 1890 in um, downtown Burlington. Uh, after that, it probably went on some tours locally throughout the state where the artist would go around, uh, unroll the mural, uh, present it in a uh, uh, theater of some kind, talk about it and uh, hopefully you had many people who has had uh, uh, personal experience during the Civil War with the battle uh, would be in, in attendance and uh, would uh, show enthusiasm for what they and their uh, relatives and other people that they knew had done during that, uh, that Civil War. Uh, the interesting thing about this mural, it's large enough to be hang, uh, hung in a uh, uh, theater uh, canvas uh, theater uh, uh, location, uh, but when they got done with it, they would roll it back up, and there's a box, much shaped like a very long canoe, which this was just dropped into, and they would put it on a cart and then transport it to the next location. Uh, we know that it was on public display from about 1890 to about 1914. Uh, we know the only uh, locations that have been uh, uh, we know for sure we're in Burlington, uh, uh, but after that, we suspect that it probably 
had made um, rounds to local theaters throughout the state of Vermont. Uh, eventually, it made its way to uh, a National Guard armory in the 1970s and uh, was left there for um, many years. When we got it here at the museum, after the National Guard Army uh, found it and donated it to the museum, uh, it was in a, a much pure, poorer shape than it is right now and needed to be restored. Uh, the relative of the uh, original artist uh, came forward and uh, donated the money to have the, uh, the mural cleaned. And over a two week period, a, uh, a restoration expert came into the museum and uh, cleaned it off inch by inch. I, I can personally say that I saw what was going on at that time. And as each area was cleaned, you said, wow, I, I never, you know, didn't realize that was uh, what this particular area looked like. And uh, the details start popping out. It was very, uh, it was very uh, nice uh, to see what actually a good restoration can do. Just wanted to mention that some of the lifelike uh, uh, faces on these uh, 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 personnel that's in the mural. The artist actually dug up uh, contemporary photographs taken during the Civil War and he used them for the faces. The uh, photo of uh, the horse uh, Rienzi uh, was actually taken from a photograph. Uh, General Sheridan's uh, uh, was another photograph. And actually, most of the, the faces you can see here were taken from Civil War photographs. Uh, so these represent people that actually uh, you know, were at, in, in the war for the Union side at that time. Uh, the horses representations are, are also from uh, uh, various uh, uh, portraits that were done, like Rutherford B. Hayes. His horse, I'm sure, was uh, one of the uh, example of them. Uh, but you can, you, anything that looks very uh, particular as far as faces, that was taken from uh, uh, a photograph that the artist had seen and used that person as the representation in the uh, uh, mural.